Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's translate what we've learned about cylinders to walls. We're going to find the heat resistance in the equation of the heat conduction in the wall. Now here we can see we have a wall, the height h, length l, thickness w. It has a constant coefficient or heat conductivity coefficient. And notice that the temperature on the left side is higher than the temperature on the right side, and we've kind of graphically indicated that by that sloped line. We can see that the heat will travel from the left side to the right side, from the higher to the lower temperature. The general equation of heat conduction is Ka delta T over X. K is the conductivity constant. A is the cross-sectional area through which the heat travels. Delta T is the difference in the temperature from one side to the other side and x is the distance of travel for the heat. In this case, it would be the width of the wall. So let's write that equation now specific for the wall here. So we can then write that q dot, which by the way, q dot is the same as dq dt, which is basically the amount of heat flowing per unit time. That's gonna equal k times the cross-sectional area. In this case, it will be the, the length times the width, uh, no, the length times the height, not the width. The length times the height. And the delta T will be the difference between the left side and the right side. So it would be T1 minus T2. And we divide all that by the distance travel, which in this case would be W, the width of the wall. So now we're going to rewrite that equation. We're going to write this as Q dot is equal to K times length times height times the difference in the temperature between the left side and the right side divided by the width. And then finally, we have Q dot is equal to, and that would be equal to delta T divided by the ratio of the width divided by K times the cross-sectional area, which in this case would be the length times the height. So that would be the cross-sectional area of the wall. And this quantity right here in the denominator is considered the heat resistance. So the denominator portion is the heat resistance. Now, what would happen if we have multiple layers? Well, the multiple layers equation, just like we saw for the cylinder, is simply going to be the delta T in the numerator plus the sum of all the heat resistances for every section of the layer, of, for every layer of a particular wall. If there's multiple layers, let's say there's an insulation layer, an outside wall, an inside wall. So what we have then is we have the heat resistances added up in the denominator written underneath the total temperature difference between the left side and the right side, even if there's a multiple layers. And that's why the concept of heat resistance is so important. It allows us to calculate an equation for multiple layers, which we're going to do in the next video. So here, notice now, let's take a look here and see what happens when these things change. So first of all, what happens when delta T goes up? Well, when delta T goes up, there's more of a drive to push the heat through. That means that Q dot will go up as well. What if W goes up? What if the, the width of the wall becomes larger? So the path of travel X, which is now W here, so here we can write that X equals W, x equals the width of the wall. So if the width of the wall increases, the path increases, that means that if there's a thicker wall, then the slope of that line will be less, the driving force of heat will be less, and Q dot will therefore diminish. What if K goes up? If K goes up, notice that K is in the denominator of the denominator. That means if there's a bigger if, uh, if there's a larger heat conductivity constant, that means heat flows more freely. That means Q dot will go up. What if the area goes up? So in this case, the area is equal to the length times the height. So the, the, long, the length of the wall times the height of the wall is the cross-section area of the wall. So if area goes up, then we have a bigger surface for heat to travel through. That means that Q will go up as well everything else kept constant. As you can see that this is as a direct result of the interpretation of that equation and that is how it's done.